When I traveled to Budapest for the first time, I knew I wanted to experience a ruin bar, a unique part of the city's nightlife. Even if you're not someone who generally likes to go out when you're traveling, I promise a ruin bar is well worth a visit. So what is a ruin bar? Well, the accepted origin story seems to go that around the early 2000s, a bunch of young people were on the lookout for cheap places to go out and have a drink. The solution was abandoned buildings and empty lots being furnished with random odds and ends and turned into bars where you could go and enjoy yourself without spending a fortune. Now, ruin bars are super popular, and while these establishments might look dilapidated on the exterior, inside they are a tangle of antiques, graffiti, art, and treasures you might discover in a junkyard or your great aunt's attic. Each ruin bar has its own vibe, and some feel more authentic than others. Mark and I visited seven of them, and in this video, I'm going to show you around. These are in no particular order, except that I'm saving the best and first ever ruin bar for last. Let's work our way up to that, shall we? The first ruin bar we visited is called Kuplung, and the name, which means clutch in Hungarian, reveals the building's history. It's a repurposed automotive repair shop. The entrance off the street is down a long tunnel. The jellyfish-like lanterns and huge whale hanging from the ceiling are your first clues that the theme here is under the sea. There's a large room in the back for dancing, plus a foosball table where I played an imaginary opponent. We headed to the main bar area to order drinks and food, and as you'll know if you've seen my past videos, I don't usually like beer, but the bartender offered to give me a sample of a fruit-flavored brew. Wait, where's this one from? It's a bad beer. Oh, okay. Something that tastes less like beer and more like cherry is pretty much the perfect beer for me. Oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah, it's good. Okay. It doesn't taste like beer. <laughs> One of the most popular Hungarian beers is called Soproni, and a small costs about $1.30 US, and a large is just two US dollars. And of course, you always have to have a cheers. How do you say cheers in your country? Let me know and let's raise a glass down in the comment section. After looking over the menu and each deciding what we wanted, we went to the courtyard because the food is prepared at a kitchen there. Can you this, sir? Thank you. So we picked up our order and I managed to carry it back without incident. Mark got the Kuplin burger with onion rings and I ordered goulash that came with bread, which was great for slurping up extra soup. Kuplin was uncrowded with friendly people, a great introduction to Budapest ruin bars. Next up is Udvarum. This ruin bar is connected to a hostel, which means it's full of travelers. So if you want to meet other people visiting the city, this is a good place to look. The main space is the courtyard of the building that has long wooden tables and a gigantic pair of lips sucking on a straw. I loved the newspapers all over the ceiling of one of the smaller rooms where you'll also find games. This bar is simple and basic in exactly the way ruin bars are intended to be. If Udvar Rome is paired back, then the next place is at the complete other end of the spectrum. It's called Instant, and it has more than 20 rooms spread across two former tenement buildings. It's so big that it doesn't feel right to just call it a ruin bar. It has multiple bars, lounges, dance floors with different DJs, game rooms, indoor and outdoor spaces, and even its own pizza bar. It's super popular, and it's easy to see why people are lined up around the block to get in here. Instant is the kind of club where you can come with a group of friends, split up, and then all have a totally different night to talk about when you meet up again later. If you and your friends can't decide where to go, go to Instant and I think you'll all be happy. There are tons of fun details everywhere you look and different themes all over. I especially love the circus area and the woman flying endlessly on the trapeze. I also like the Budapest room, the huge wall of international postage stamps, and of course, the globe lamps. Another favorite are the screens that feel like you're looking out airplane windows passing by random things. Instant is a great spot all around, but especially if you want to dance. For dancing, this is my top pick. One of the ruin bars I was most excited for initially is called Corvin. It sits at the top of the former Corvin department store, and I thought it looked so cool from the outside because I was imagining that the club would take up the entire building and be full of old mannequins and cash registers or something. Once we got inside, however, I realized that it's only the top floor, which used to be a storage area before being turned into a club. We climbed a bunch of stairs and discovered that Corvin was almost completely dead as in we were literally some of the only people there other than the staff. We weren't even there that early, so I have no idea why it was so quiet, but it's not what we were hoping for. We climbed more stairs up to the roof and found it equally as empty. Apparently they do rooftop cinema nights here though, which would be wonderful. 
It's kind of a bit spooky in a way, being in a deserted club, so we didn't stay very long. But when it's full, I bet it's a really fun place to go dancing. If you're more into arcade games than dancing, then Fuge Udvar is the ruin bar for you. It's super laid back and unpretentious, with long tables full of people chatting. There are lots of different games here like Power Pong and one of my personal favorites, Pinball. Lots of pinball machines to choose from, actually. We didn't have any money for the games, but that didn't start Mark from hopping into the driver's seat of a racing game. Fuge Udvar also has the cheapest drinks we saw. A small beer here was just over one US dollar. The most modern feeling ruin bar I went is called Doba's, and for whatever reason, there weren't many people there this night either. This used to be a residential building, and the modern feeling interior is a surprising contrast to the more beat up looking exterior. The best part is the courtyard, where lights change color and the crowning glory is a giant sculpture that looks like a robot or a gorilla hugging a tree that is apparently 320 years old. There are lots of food and drink options here, but it wasn't as unique feeling as some of the other ruin bars we visited. In a way, the interior rooms feel more like they could be at any club in the world, if you know what I mean. I loved the big sculpture though, and I'm sure that in warm weather, when there are loads of people in the courtyard, it'd be a great space to hang out. I promised to show you my favorite ruin bar, so here it is. I've saved the best for last. It's an old stove factory called Simpla Kurt, and it's Budapest's first ruin bar. The original, the genuine article, and the one credited with starting the whole ruin bar scene. You'll find all sorts of people here. Lots of travelers, some locals, younger people, older people, there's even a senior's discount, but mostly you'll just find a lot of people. Simpla Kurt is contained chaos, and it's shoulder to shoulder throughout most of the space. There are lots of different areas and rooms, and each one has its own character. Everywhere you look are random, unexpected things to rest your eyes on. Old school computer monitors suspended from the ceiling, welding masks that light up, gigantic bunny rabbits, graffiti, live fish swimming in a tank, random art everywhere, and a mannequin. I finally found my mannequin after being disappointed that Corvin, that former department store, didn't have any. Clearly, I watched way too much Today's Special as a kid. <laughs> By the way, if you don't know that show, it's about a mannequin that comes to life in a store after hours, and it's amazing. Google it. <laughs> anyway, there are different bars around Simpla Kurt, like a wine bar, a hookah bar, and a bar that feels like a chemistry lab or a pharmacy. In one of the outdoor spaces, an amazing animated movie about mice was being projected onto the wall from up on the second floor. If you know where this film is from, please tell me. I thought it was adorable and I have no idea what it is. There are different DJs around as well as live music. It doesn't feel overly curated or art directed, which is exactly why people love it. And it's easy to understand how this was the ruin bar that started it all. You can just go inside and wander around if you feel like it. And if you only visit one ruin bar just to see what it's like, then this should be it. It feels unique, but as a point of reference, it did remind me a bit of going out in Berlin to places that are crumbling and weird in the best way. Ruin bars are definitely part of Budapest culture now, and it's really fun to see how the city changes and comes to life after dark. I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing how the need for cheap places to have a drink has evolved into different styles of ruin bars that are now the cornerstone of Budapest nightlife. I'd love to hear what you guys think, so let me know your thoughts on the concept of ruin bars, which one in this video you like the best, and whether you like to go out at night in general when you're traveling. I made a whole series of videos in Budapest, so I'll link those as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching!